but your boy, y'all. Y'all's boy. That's y'all's boy. Joe Biden. Y'all's boy. Y'all know y'all voted for Joe Biden. I know. Y'all got y'all Biden Harris <laughs> yard sign still up. Um, Joe Biden. Just to give you guys an indication as to where y'all think Joe Biden might be <laughs> uh, when it comes to um, the continued aggressions by Israel into Palestine, into Gaza, um, the continued killing and bombing of Palestinian civilians. Um, I, I don't like the framing that like the national news does. And maybe I did it just earlier too. When you talk about the, the children, yes, it is horrific that I think over 60 children have been murdered. Um, but these children ha- need adults in their lives, right? So the, the Palestinian adults who have also been killed is no less tragic uh, than the kids. Like all of these lives being needlessly stolen and for what? Um, is, is something that we have to we have to keep in mind. But your boy Joe Biden, back in 2016, uh, Joe Biden, while running for president, uh, made this statement. This this clip is actually courtesy of of CNN. This would be the B one tune day if you if you if you had any question as to where you thought Joe Biden was going to end up on this situation. Uh, th- and I'm sure there are loads of clips that predate 2016, where Joe Biden is fawning, I'm sure, slobbering over over Israel and making excuses for the the barbaric way that the Israeli state treats Palestine. Uh, But this is from 2016. So just just check out the the enthusiasm that Uncle Joe has in this declaration in his support for Israel. Let's take that out today. Were I a Jew, I would be a Zionist. And my father pointed out to me, I did not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist. For I am. Israel is essential to the security of Jews worldwide. Mmm. Mmm. Kind of left a bad, a strange taste in your mouth, did it not? Uh, and, you know, there in that clip, Joe Biden, in a very small clip, it, Echoes a position that I don't seem to understand. And perhaps you all who are perhaps more learned and more informed than I, let me go back here to this here chat because I'm looking for answers straight up. Um, Joe Biden says that the state of Israel is integral to the security of of Jews. And if you guys remember back to our Friday show, the clip that we played, I believe it was from the Empire Files that did some random street interviews with um, citizens of Israel and the abject uh, cruelty and just not give a fuck about people who were who were Arab or Muslim or who it was so like cruel and macabre and like ghoulish. And it was scary. Right. But here's my question. Why does Israel and the, the, the Zionists, the very zealous supporters of the state of Israel, this has nothing to do with Judaism. Oh, y'all, I don't even have to say this to y'all. It's ain't no, it's no shots at, at Jews for being Jewish, right? It's, we don't play, we don't play in them games. Don't, and there ain't no anti-Semitic shit here at all. Um, but the state of Israel fucking sucks in terms of their foreign policy. Like, make no mistake about that. But why all the smoke for the Arabs? It was the Germans and Europeans who executed the Holocaust. It was the Russians who put the, the Jewish people in pogroms, you know, funneled, funneled them into, into ghettos, would not allow them to rise above a certain social station. Why all the smoke for the Arabs? Like, what did, the, did Israel need to have beef with Germany? <laughs> like, you're talking about go get your land back, shawty, shawty. Whole swaths of Europe exclusively for, for Jewish people. They need to go get that shit back. Leave Palestine the fuck alone. Go holler at Vladimir Putin in Russia. Be like, hey, we need all that 19th century back, chief. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Why are these spammers? What did Palestine do besides just exist? This is why there's so much. I believe uh, black solidarity, African solidarity with the Palestinian people, because African people and people who are descendants of Africans can see our whole situation in what the fuck is happening in Palestine, right? Like how does Israel 
bombing the shit out of Palestine. How is that different than the Tulsa race riots, right? Like, how does that differ than the Wilmington? Uh, I hate to call it the Tulsa race riots. Y'all, y'all know what I mean. I, y'all know what I mean, man. I can't even go back and correct myself because y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. But anyway, y'all's boy, Joe Biden. So that's that's where you thought Joe Biden was. Well, Joe Biden apparently called Benjamin Netanyahu on the phone <laughs> and asked him for a ceasefire. Uh, Tunde, if you could pop up, B2 for me, please, y'all. As much as I hate to credit CNN, God damn it. I hate CNN so fucking bad. But God damn it, I found this CNN article to be informative. <laughs> it, it, it contains some facts um, or some reporting, rather, that I was not... 100% aware. So I was appreciative of it. So um, despite Joe Biden calling um, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and asking asking for a ceasefire, can you please stop firing the missiles that we just sold you <laughs> at Palestine? Can you, can you not fire the shit that we just sent over to y'all? And I'm being a bit um, uh, hi, 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 hyperbolic. And I don't like the way hyperbole and hyperbolic break down. In different way anyway anyway cnn is reporting that the biden administration apparently prior to israel's most recent aggression into gaza had approved this sale 735 million dollars of missiles of sharp as fuck missiles the same missiles that the idf gets on tv and talks to richard engel from nbc and brags about how precise their shit was and how it's supposed to minimize casualties nigga if you don't get the whole fuck out of here with that bullshit it's a fucking missile like what you mean just minimize casualties what the point the point of the missile is casualties make it make sense who you think you're talking to anyway cnn reports that this sale was authorized at least by the White House prior to Israel's most recent aggression. This, I can't say authorized y'all because apparently, as some of you may know, the White House can apparently just sell arms to whoever the fuck. They just gotta notify Congress, give Congress a little bit of heads up, a little bit of notification. And for certain countries, Israel being one of them, uh, for, for, first of all, the, 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 the review process that Congress has to review such arms sales like this one is typically 30 days. But with some countries, Israel being one of them, that review process gets cut in half. It's down to 14 or 15 days. So apparently the Biden administration first notified Congress about this sale at the beginning of the month. So basically that 15, 14 review day period is damn near done. So I don't know which Democrats, if any, have raised this issue about this weapon sale, which apparently is going to go through. Recent events notwithstanding, genocide notwithstanding, the United States fully intends to sell $735 million worth of missiles to Israel. Now, now I guess that's a profit, right? But it's amazing how the United States traffics like so much in death. Like Cuba exports doctors, America exports missiles. Like that just goes to show you what our priority is as a nation and where our moral, moral character lies or the government, the moral, moral, I keep saying moral because I can't fucking talk. The moral character of the government of this whole nation uh, is about death. Um, it is not uncommon for the United States to support a genocide of of a brown people, right? Because who does genocide better than us? Nazis was copying our shit. You feel me? <laughs> right? The Nazis was like, "Ooh, look at what the fuck they did over there in America to the indigenous and to the to the African people." Oh man, take notes, Hitler. Write that down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ugh. So the missiles are headed over to Israel at some point or another. I sincerely doubt that um, anyone is going to be courageous enough to stop this. And might I say, 
the Biden administration could take this opportunity to really impress us <laughs> in terms of maybe perhaps being a stand up kind of guy. Like you see what the fuck is going on. Do you not Joe Biden with your old ass? Ain't you trying to get into heaven? Maybe you should not facilitate the sales of missiles to a nation that you know undoubtedly intends to use them to kill innocent people. Now, how the hell do you think Jesus is going to look at you when you meet him? Maybe in the not so distant future, <laughs> like Joe Biden need to be trying to clean up his resume, trying to go see Jesus old ass anyway. And that's not a shot to our to our to our mature viewers. Joe Biden, I just dislike him very much. But Joe Biden, you guys, is just continuing uh, in a long policy um, of how the United States engages with Israel. Like, apparently Israel can't fuck up. Uh, Israel really can't do no wrong. Like, even when Israel does wrong, it's not wrong, right? Uh, let me give you all an example. Well, first of all, where should we start? All right, let's stay in the present. Tunde, can I get B4, please? Now, what are we about to see in B4? This is an indication that Joe Biden is not worried about going to heaven. <laughs> because, because. Apparently, the members of the United Nations Security Council, of which the United States is a member, um, have been trying to pass a formal statement um, condemning the actions of Israel or rather calling for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. And the U.N. Security Council has met, I believe, three times in the past week. Uh, who is reporting this? Al Jazeera. A third U.N. Security Council emergency meeting in a week amid the, the deadly Israeli offensive in Gaza has again ended with no concrete outcome after the United States blocked a joint statement calling for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The U.S. can't even fix its crooked mouth and face to even issue a statement formally, like on the record in the, the international body of note, right? Like, I don't know what Israel got something on somebody or maybe lots of somebody's. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't understand the United States can't even say that Israel is doing wrong. Like y'all can't even admit that they wrong, like on a in paper. You know what I'm saying? Like you're still going to sell them the missiles, but at least be a proper hypocrite and condemn the actions in a body that li that literally has very little power, right? What's the UN Security Council going to do about this statement? Not a goddamn thing. It's it's a it's a parliamentary thing. It's it's symbolic. That's it. Uh, but it's notable because the United uh, because the United States is the only one holding up this statement. Not China. Not Russia. Not the UK. Not France. Not none of the other UN Security Council members. Uh, is Canada on the UN Security Council? I think so. Just the US. Because we live in a country that is determined to be morally on the wrong side of every fucking thing at every chance it gets, but, but still has the hubris and the audacity to wag its finger to talk about human rights <laughs> at other places. Oh man, I should have pulled, not, I mean, not today, I didn't pull it, but did you guys see that clip? Maybe it was like from a week or two ago of uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. She was in the, the press room of the White House. And she said something, maybe it was it a statement about Colombia? Anyway, but the clip was Jen Psaki saying that the United States, uh, you know, condemns coups and, you know, usurpations of democracy. And the journalist in the room was like, what, 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 nigga, what, what? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Uh, because the United States track record actually indicates that we are most in favor of coups and disruptions of democracy in Latin America. So are you sure you're speaking from the correct podium there, Jen Psaki? We'll find that for next week, actually. Because it was, it was fun. I laughed at the shit. Tunde, can we go to B3? B3, please. Did y'all give me some information in the chat? Ooh, somebody sent us some money. Who is that? Cassie, what's up, Cassie? Oh, Cassie, that's nice of you, Cassie. Thank you so much. 
We will take your ten dollars, Cassie. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Um, your boys. Now, do you see that number there? Do y'all see that? That was Obama's parting gift to Netanyahu and the state of Israel on his way out the door. 2016, Israel to get 38 billion. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. 38 b with a b billion. <laughs> okay. 38 billion over 10 years in military aid, U.S. officials say. Now, $38 billion, $38 billion, while this country scrimped and coddled together like a very shitty response to a global pandemic where our medical staff could not have access to proper gear, to proper masks, to ventilation, where <laughs> Lake Charles, Louisiana, is flooded like fuck right now due to climate change. And yet their representatives, I'm talking about the Republican ones in Congress, are pushing against Joe Biden's infrastructure plan. That would help Lake Charles. Like, I mean, my point is, if we got money for Israel, we got money for all the shit that we need right here in America, right? And perhaps if Israel's politics weren't so disastrous, literally, for the Palestinian people. And maybe if Israel was actually poor, you know, maybe <laughs> like, OK, maybe we maybe not 38 billion. Maybe we send them one or two or three billion. But no, Israel doesn't deserve any of this money from us, especially considering that everything about the United States pandemic response has been nickel and dime to the American people. But yet we have money, billions and billions of dollars every year to prop up Israel so they can fire missiles at Palestinians who are basically firing off like firecrackers and shit. I mean, come on. At some point, yo, like somebody and I know this is a pretty much a long shot, but my God, like somebody who is not a Washington insider and not beholden to. And I hold on, I'm stopping myself because I'm almost describing Trump. Right? <laughs> Except Trump was a fucking Klansman, right? So Klansmen are not going to lead us in the right direction. No chance. Uh, but a nigga that's not privy and not like who, who, who Israel don't have shit on, right? I mean, I'm just trying to figure this out. <laughs> we knew, y'all, like we cannot keep up this farce. Like we cannot keep propping up Israel as a nuclear armed state and giving them foreign aid when we don't have health care here in this country. We don't, we don't have universal health care. We don't have universal child care. I'm tired. I'm so tired.